Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Julius D. Berry, Music Studios. Um, this is my first time doing a uh, YouTube stream, but I uh, just wanted to kind of run some things and check to make sure it's all working right. But I think we're set up good, and I've just posted the links on Facebook and in the uh, Antelope Audio Facebook groups. Um, a couple of guys that have been looking and asking about it, so finally decided to go ahead and get this put up but uh today uh we are just going to uh we've done the overview on the antelope audio uh Eliath control panel and uh what we're doing now is going to be talking about specifically the routing and uh how the routing works um how the routing works for the uh the antelope system so i'm just going to give a couple more minutes for uh, some of those viewers to come in and then we're going to go ahead and get started with this. If you guys are new to the channel or this is your first time, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, I do have uh, the comments pulled up so I can see um, what people are saying or if people are saying anything. Um, but we're going to be discussing the... Uh, Again, we're going to be discussing the Lyeth audio, um, the, the, not the interface specifically, but the routing system and um, how that works for us. Maybe another minute or so, and then we're going to go ahead and get this started. Um, I, I just recently got into the Antelope systems. I've uh, been looking at them for quite a while, but decided to um go ahead and jump on it um with one of those cells that were running at the end of february so i just decided to go ahead and get in there and get this and get started and i am loving it absolutely loving it so uh if you guys are able to hear me well please let me know if you cannot hear me um let me know that as well so any adjustments that need to be made can be made before um things get going Okay, um, all right, so basically, uh, I did tell the guys in the group that uh, I was going to record this live stream uh, just to make sure people were able to come back and see the animation later. Um, but we're going to, to get to the routing system in the Goliath, uh, in, in their control panel, just push the routing button. It's uh, right here at the top left of the screen. And as you see, um, there are several lines here in the <clears throat> in the control panel, uh, and all of these lines correlate to something specific within the uh, the Goliath system, either an input or an output. Each one of these numbers and colors you see correlate directly to an input or an output on the system. Um, my Goliath specifically has sixteen microphone preamps on it so where it says preamp here that is each one of these numbers is indicates uh one of those inputs um and that goes the same for the instrument inputs one through four um the mic emulations uh the line ends there are 32 analog line ends on this system not 32 excuse me 16 analog analog line ends on this system and you access those via uh, db25 uh, and then there are 64 uh, channels available for audio and the thunderbolt connection uh, the usb connection allows for two <coughs> outputs or inputs into the system uh, there are 64 MADI connections <coughs> there are 16 adat connections uh, 16 of the AES ports, two SPDIF, the AFX out, 16 of those, and then you have the mic, the mix, excuse me, the mix um, outputs as well, and there's four of those that you are allowed <clears throat> to access via this, this system here. Mixers here, all, you have four of them, and they're 
all connected to these four sections here on the console. Um, so basically what this is, is a huge virtual control panel. Um, not control panel, excuse me. Um, what do they call them? Patch bay. This is a huge patch bay. Um, if you guys, guys have seen those analog patch bays with all the ends and outs on the bot on the back and on the front of the unit and it allows you to route audio just by using a simple cable uh, you're able to route audio in and out of uh out of the patch bay that's the exact same concept that goliath or that antelope has given us with this system you're able to route signals from one place to another place and instead of physically patching cables you're going to um instead of physically patching cables you're going to drag your mouse in order to patch cables from one place to the other now you have this from section up here and all of these are the set the, the inputs that you are going to drag from here to the bottom down where it says two so anything up at the top section where it says from you're able to send that information from that place to this place so from the from to the to, from the from to the to. So example, if I wanted to plug a microphone into uh, this, into my preamp, into the first section of the preamp or the first input of the preamp. Hold one second. Let me check some, something real quick. The stream got a message. Really quick, really quick. Um, hmm. Sure, this got where it's supposed to be. Okay, good. Okay, good. I did. All right, so if you had a microphone plugged into any one of these um, pre up inputs, those are on the back, those XLR. Uh, quarter inch combo jacks if you had a microphone or a keyboard plugged into these any one of these numbers and you wanted to simply hear them uh, or you hear them out of your monitor so let's just say I plugged up a keyboard I had a Yamaha motif and I took that two outputs uh, two main left and right outputs and I take take them from the keyboard and plug them into the back of the interface you just would not be able to hear it even if I had speakers plugged into the monitors on the Goliath you still would not be able to hear the keyboard but you have to tell the system, I want to take those inputs. Let's just say if we did preamp one and two, if we had the left and right a stereo signal plugged into the interface, we would take these channels, we would highlight them. Now, now you can highlight one channel at a time. If you're doing a mono signal like a microphone, you can just highlight one. Or if you're doing a stereo signal, you can highlight two. And then you can also highlight several at once so if you want to highlight if I'm gonna if I need to hear channel 6 through channel 16 I would just highlight all of these channels drag them it's like this and there's a little icon on the back of the cursor not sure if you can see that very well there's a little icon on the back of the cursor that shows you how you are dragging your routing information from one place to the next so again if you had that uh, keyboard input in, input it into channels one and two in the preamp or into the interface and you wanted to just simply play the piano and be able to hear it and you had speakers connected to your monitors you would just drag this they're both highlighted you would just drag them down to the main monitor and you can see right here in this area right here it's telling you what you are dragging and where you're sending it to it's going to change depending on which output you're selecting to send it to but if I just wanted to simply hear that keyboard that was plugged into this section these preamps number one and number two I would drag them down to the main monitors and I would let it go and now you could play the keyboard that was plugged into preamps channel one and two you'll be able to hear them coming from the main monitor the same thing if you wanted to if it was late at night and you just wanted to to play your keyboard or your piano or talking your microphone and sing and you didn't want it to come out of your speakers 
but you just wanted to come out of your headphones, then you could send that same signal like we did, channels one and two. You could send that signal to either one of these headphones, headphone one or headphone two. All right. Um, and then if you had headphones plugged into, of course, if you had headphones plugged into the interface, you would just be able to be able to hear the audio that you sent, just like you were plugging cables. Just plug in a patch cable from preamp one out to the main monitor input, then preamp out to to the main monitor input two, and that would allow you to hear. These. So of course, you know that is that is it at its most basic level. It's dragging a or connecting a cable from one place to the next. But we're using virtual cables, so we're just basically instead of dragging cables from one place to another, we're just dragging our mouse from one place to another, and it allows the uh, input or outputs to come from. Um, from one place to the next. Um, so, um, I don't know if we have any questions so far, but uh, that is basically the gist of the, um, of, of how the system works. But of course, you know, it gets a lot more complex than that. I'm not going to say complicated, but complex, yes. Um, because within this system, we have mixes that are being set up, and that's done through mix channel one, mix channel two, mix channel three, mix channel four, and that's what I showed you on this screen here. Um, this These mixer sections right here, I'm going to um, I'll make this a little smaller in a second, but these mixer sections right here, again, these all correspond or correlate with these mix inputs here, mix outputs here, and then these are your mix channels down here. So you have mix left, right, mix, I mean, mix one left, right, mix two left, right, mix three left, right, mix four left, right. And then you have mix channel one, mix channel two, mix channel three, mix channel four. So each one of these, um, each one of these mixer mixer channels one two three and four correspond to these mixer channels that i showed you here mixer one two three so within this um if you wanted to just set up a mix so the same way we set up where we wanted to hear those the keyboard that we plugged into channel one and two we wanted to hear that out of the monitors um of, now i got the keyboard plugged into the monitors and I can hear the keyboard, but if somebody comes along and they bring a microphone, or if I decide I want to hook a microphone up, now I can't hear the microphone because I got the microphone plugged in the preamp channel three, but now I got to route the microphone to somewhere. But when I route the microphone from channel three to the main monitor, now I have completely done away with the, uh, the, the fact that I sent the keyboard there on one and two. So what you have to do is you have to, it's almost like a sub mix on an analog mixer. Um, you, if you only have two inputs going into your, your main main speakers, then you need to submix everything in a smaller mixer and then send the outputs from that mixer to the uh, to the outputs for your, your mains. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to say that again just, just to make sure that makes sense. If you are in a situation like right here where our main monitors, we have two only two main monitors on this antelope interface. My, and that is a sign here with one and two main monitor one and two. Uh, that's how all of our information that is put in the into the interface into the control panel into the console is sent out. So, but we have all of these inputs. Like we have sixteen preamps. We have four places we can plug guitars in. We have sixteen line inputs. Um, we have all of these inputs here but we only have two outputs. And so in order for us to get the information from our inputs to our outputs, we have to combine these inputs in some kind of way before they can be sent to the main monitor. And that is what these four mixer channels are for down here. Mix channel one, mix channel two, mix channel three, mix channel four. So, that, so now if I want to hear the keyboard, instead of sending the keyboard to, um, sending the keyboard by itself to the monitors, I'm going to send the keyboard all the way down here to, I'm just going to pick one of these channels. I'm going to send the keyboard all the way down here to mix channel one. So mix channel one, is like its own submixer. 
for this entire interface, for this entire, entire control panel. Mixer channel one, let's just say I got me like a little 32 channel um, Mackie mixer sitting right here on my desk. Let's just say, for example, I don't, but let's say we have a 32 channel Mackie mixer. I would plug those two outputs from the keyboard into the Mackie mixer. Let me um, pull up something. This may make it a little uh, better for you guys as far as listening and talk. Okay, so because I'm using hand motions and everything, I just want to make sure you guys can see me. So, because we're interacting here or wanting to interact. Um, so if I had a me had a 32 channel Mackie mixer sitting here on my desk and I wanted to combine the inputs from several keyboards and several microphones into that mixer because I only have two speakers and I can only plug I could I can't plug the keyboards into the speakers and the microphone into the speakers all at one time because the speakers only have a left and right. So I'd have to send everything to the mixer first plug everything into the mixer, make it sound good the way I want it to sound, and then send the outputs from the mixer to, to, my, to my main output speakers. And so that's the same thing that we'll do here. We would send the keyboard output right here. Let's say we have the keyboards plugged into preamp channel one and two. We would take channels one and two, and we would drag them down to the mixer channels one and two. And now the keyboard is going to that mixer. Mixer channel one, this is its own separate 32 channel mixer. And now the keyboard is going there. So if we wanted to plug the microphone in there too, what will we do? One second, messages. Um, all right, so, <clears throat> Sure, people know this is people from the analog group getting I just you know got a message or something, so I'm making sure that they know that this is live right now. You guys just give me just a second to talk to these guys and let them know that this is this is live um All right, I think. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so we have, we just finished talking about, we now have the, the preamp from the keyboards. This is, we're just doing this all virtually now explaining. So what we've done so far, uh, and welcome to the stream, uh, people that have just entered in. Um, we are talking about the routing for the Goliath, the Antelope Audio um, Goliath control panel. And we've just finished talking about the fact that this mix channel one, mix channel two, mix channel three, mix channel four, these are their own separate 32 channel mixers. Mix channel one has 32 inputs, mix channel two has 32 inputs, mix channel three has 32 inputs, mix channel four has 32 inputs. So you're able to combine as much as 32 inputs from this from section down here on this mix channel on the on the mix channel and basically I describe this mix channel as a uh, just imagine you have a 32 channel analog Mackie mixer sitting on your desk. 
you have, if you wanted to, to play your keyboards, you have three or four keyboards, let's say you have three or four microphones, you're able to send all of those outputs from that, uh, from, you know, from your interface or wherever you're sending audio from to that mixer. And then you plug that mixer of the outputs from that mixer are going to go into your, uh, to your, your main monitors or your headphones or however you, you, you do your monitoring and listening to your audio. Um, so at its simplest point, you know, we described that you would just drag the preamp, like just if we had a, a two microphones or a keyboard stereo output, we would plug that from this preamp section. We would drag it down channels one and two. If we just wanted to hear it from the monitors, we would plug it right here, but that's not going to get us very far. Um, that's in its simplest form though. That's, that would work, but that would not get us very far. So. We, this is where we're going to utilize these mixers, these 32 channel mixers that are way down here at the bottom in the two section, mix channel one through four. So we would take the preamp, drag the two channels from the preamp, and we would connect them to mix channel one and two. So if I had a keyboard plugged into my, the back of my interface on channels one and two, or seven and eight, or 11 and 12, we would drag those outputs from the preamp to this 32 channel mixer. And so now that audio that is coming out of my keyboard would go into this 32 channel mixer called mix channel one. So that's the keyboard there. So let's just say that now, you know, we got a keyboard plugged up and we're, we can hear the keyboard. Well, we can't hear the keyboard because we haven't sent the outputs from the mixer anywhere yet. So we're going to do that in just a second. But first, we, let's get everything plugged into the mixer that we want. So let's just say we have a couple of microphones. We got microphone one plugged into channel five. We got microphone two plugged into channel six. We got microphone three plugged into channel seven. So we'll just highlight these three, five, six, and seven. And we would drag those down to the mixer. We could put them on any channels that we like. So I'll just, just for the sake of the example, I'll put them on channels five and six, five, six, and seven. Okay, so now if you look at this mixer in, in the Goliath, in the uh, interface section, now on mixer one, we have keyboards plugged into channel one and two. And like we talked about before in one of the other videos, I believe you can link stereo, link these with this button down here. It looks like a chain sure if you can see that because of my um, picture is on my uh, my uh, video it's out of the way all right so you can chain link these together stereo link them together and now your keyboards are together here on channels one and two and then we put microphones on channel five six seven so this is this is the 32 channel mixer right here you have 32 channels one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen then seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty thirty two thirty two channel mixer and then your master bus is right here so now we have a keyboard plugged into channel one and two and we have three microphones plugged into channel five, six, and seven. All right. So if we want to hear those uh, microphones, we have to send the audio from this mixer, from this mixer to somewhere where we can monitor it. We can send that. And here is the output for mixer number one. It's a stereo out one and two. Stereo out one and two right here for mix two. Stereo out for mix three right here. And stereo mix out for uh, channel four. Uh, mixer, mixer channel four. All right. So, again, just so everybody understands, we've sent a keyboard on channels one and two. And we've sent three microphones on five, six, and seven to this 32 channel mixer called Mix Channel One. The output of Mix Channel One is going to show up right here on Mix One left and right. 
So this right here, these this number one and number two for mix channel one will be equivalent to the main outputs on that 32 channel mixer that we talked about we were imagining was sitting on our desk. <clears throat> All right. So if you want to hear that, if you want to hear the outputs from that mixer that's sitting on your desk, what would you do? You would plug a cable from the left output and from the right output to your left speaker and your right speaker. And that indicate is indicated here under main monitor. So you'd go left, right, left out, drag the left out to number one, and the right out to number two. Or you could highlight them at the same time and drag the output to the main monitor. And now out of your speakers, <clears throat> you should be you would be able to hear the keyboard. That is plugged into channel one and two on your mixer. Go back over here again to this mixer. You'll be able to hear the keyboards on channel one and two. And you will be able to hear the microphones on channel five, six, seven. So hopefully now your imagination is just running wild because 30 that means you can take up to 32 of these inputs from this top section and combine them down here at the bottom. And create your own custom mix and hear things hear exactly what you want to hear and nothing else you can combine uh, different combinations of these 16 mic pre's the 16 DB 25 uh, outputs I mean inputs that are on the back of the unit um, this Thunderbolt play these channels or the USB, you can't do the Thunderbolt and USB. You can do either or you pick which one, either or you can pick how you want your, your computer to be connected to the interface. It's either the uh, Thunderbolt, and if that is, you then have access to these 64 Thunderbolt channels or these 32 USB channels if you decide you like to use USB. So you can combine all of these different things and then down here in the mixer, send the mixer to... This mixer is sent to one of the outputs, depending on which one you're you're utilizing. This is mix one. Mix channel one is its own separate mixer. Mix channel two is its own separate mixer. Mix channel three is its own separate mixer. Mix channel four is its own separate mixer. So mix channel one left right, that's its own separate set of outputs. Mix channel two, mix two left and right, that's its own separate set of outputs. Mix three left and right, that's its own separate set of outputs. Mix four left and right, that's its own set of outputs. So we combined everything that we were combining. We combined it all into, um, we combined it all into mix channel one. And so then we sent the outputs from mix channel one, one and two here. We sent those out to the main monitor. And now everything that we connect to that mixer, everything that we connected to that mixer, can be heard coming out of our main speakers. Now, now that's fine. You know, you already got it set up, but just because the setup doesn't mean you have to stop there. If you decide, hey, well, I want to plug this other keyboard up. You don't have to unplug the one that's on preamp one and two. You got another keyboard plugged into three and four. You just take channel three and four, highlight them together. You're going to push shift, uh, hold shift when you click them, and that's going to highlight them. And then you just drag them down to mix your channel three and four or wherever on this, in this 32 channel mixer that you want to sit them. They can go in on any one of these channels. And after you put them on those channels, those outputs show up here on the mixer. I'm trying to make this stuff so big enough for you guys to see it, but I keep having to let it leave the screen at the same time. Um, they, they would show up, that second keyboard that you plugged up would show up right here on channel three and four. And again, you can stereo link them. Now they move freely independent of anything else. So it's really, really flexible. I mean, it, it can be complex, but if you understand audio routing and how mixers work, how patch bay works, then this like this system is, is so awesome with what it opens up as far as possibilities of what you can send where. And what's even crazier is that this is just one mixer. This is 32 channels is a lot. In, I mean, in most live settings, 32 channel is going to be plenty um, to accommodate what you need as far as that live setting is concerned. Uh, in a studio, yep, 32 channels, that's, it's not a whole lot, but, um, but it, it's a lot. 
at the same time. But that's just one mixer. You actually have 32 times 32 times you have four 32 channel mixers that you're allowed to come up with your own combination of inputs and what you're sending um, to the console at any given time. So again, the world is yours. You can do whatever you want. It's, I mean, it's, it's just completely awesome to me how it's set up. But then again, stuff gets a little more complex from there. So we've gone over the simplest thing that we could do, and that was just plug in a keyboard and a microphone up, or a keyboard or a microphone and connecting it directly to the monitors, directly to the speaker so you could hear it. Then we next we covered plugging up several keyboards or several microphones into a mixer, which is down here, mix channel one, two, three, or four, and then sending that mixer's outputs to the main monitor. Now, what we're all here for though, what we all bought this interface for is so that we could record, 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 record. And that is the that is the doozy. That is where things get really fun, get mushy at the same time, mushy in your brain. You're like, oh my God, this is just so much to think about. But it's it's so simple. If you understand at its core what I just showed you, what I just taught you, then all of this is it's it's so it's so simple. Okay, so Thunderbolt play one through thirty-two and thirty-three through sixty-four and USB play one through thirty-two. These represent the inputs into your. Nope, I take that back. These represent the outputs from your computer. The Thunderbolt Rec 1 through 32 and Thunderbolt Rec 33 through 64 or USB Rec 1 through 32. Those represent, yep, that's right. It's the it's the two side. These represent the channels that are coming into your computer to be recorded. Okay. Mm -hmm. The channels coming into your computer to be recorded. Now, this is like I said, this is where things you see. I just made a mistake that quick, but I corrected it. All right. So if I want that keyboard that we had plugged into preamp one and two. Remember, we plugged a keyboard into channels one and two on the preamp, the inputs on the back, and we had another keyboard on channel three and four. And we had three microphones on channels five, six, and seven. So right now we have a keyboard plugged into channels one and two on the preamp on the back. We have a keyboard plugged into channels three and four. Those are stereo, two stereo keyboards. And then we have three microphones on channels five, six, and seven. If I want to record that keyboard, I will simply hold on before we before I show you that before I show you that I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up logic. Okay, <clears throat> I did not know this until maybe uh, in November sometime, but you're able to look at every input. Okay, I have in my I'm gonna show you guys this too because that's it's kind of wild it's crazy. Um, I have created an aggregate device. I've talked about this on my other streams and, and uh, some of my videos, but I am using an Apollo uh, X8P, and I'm also using, of course, the Antelope Audio Goliath. I have made a super aggregate device that includes all inputs and outputs from the Goliath and all inputs and outputs from the Universal Audio as well. This gives me now I will never need all these channels, but um using these things together or you know just the thought of using them together was kind of dope to me, so that's why I did this. And there's some other reasons why I combine them as well. Um but we'll we'll talk about that in future videos or maybe a little later today. But this gives me a total of 95 96 inputs and 98 outputs combining these two together one second combining these two together together give me a combine of 90 96 inputs and 98 outputs 
inputs. Each one of these inputs represents something either in the Goliath control panel or the Universal Audio console. Each one of these green little lines you see represent represent an input for the Goliath and all of these black ones <clears throat> represent an input for the Thunderbolt. <clears throat> I mean the um the Apollo. All right. So from here it's kind of cool. I did not know this until like in November, but in Logic, if you go to this mix like uh in in the Logic normal menu, you go to mix and then you go to input output labels <clears throat> it shows you a list of every single input that your interface sees time right every single input every single input all the buses that logic has available every single input <clears throat> okay so if i look here with this Show this at the same time. Sure. Um, one second. Um, so, like I told you guys before, each one of these inputs from my audio MIDI setup correlates to one of the inputs inside of Logic. So inputs 1 through 64, and this is green thing, you can't see that because it's really small, but inputs 1 through 64 are the Goliath. So if you look over here in Logic, inputs 1 all the way to 64 are Goliath inputs. Channel 65 through 96. Our inputs from the universal audio. All right. Okay. So inside of Logic, I have to know what channels. I know I have 64 channels with Goliath. Okay. <clears throat> These 64 channels are directly related to the 64 channels that we talked about right here. In the Thunderbolt record one through thirty two and thirty three through sixty four. Okay. All right. Again, those sixty four channels that I showed you from the Goliath interface one through sixty four correspond to the same sixteen channels. Set up in Logic, right here, 1 through 64, 64 all the way to channel 1. All right, and those show up right here on the Thunderbolt record, 232, 33 through 64. So if I want to record that keyboard that at the beginning of the session, we had plugged into channels 1 and 2. I want that keyboard to show up inside of Logic. I have to drag channels one and channel two to the Thunderbolt record one and two. All right. That will allow Logic, again, the Thunderbolt record. I'm using Thunderbolt for mine, so I have access to 64 inputs into my DAW. Some of you guys may be using USB, so you have 32 channels that'll show up in your DAW. But if I want to record that keyboard, it will be just like in a normal interface. If I had if I had a focus right interface and I had uh, my keyboards left and right plugged up into the front inputs on the front of that focus right interface, it's gonna show up in my computer on channels one and two. Well, I have to route it using this control panel that Antelope has given us. I'm routing preamp one and two because that's where we plug the keyboard up. 
into Thunderbolt Record to 32. Okay? Then from there, in Logic, I would go into it. I would open up a channel, or you guys could do the same thing in whatever your DAW of choice is. Open up your channel. I mean, you open up your, your channel count. I mean, your, your interface to open up your system to, to tell the computer DAW where to get your inputs from. And I say one and two. Channels one and two are directly related to the 30, I mean, the two channels on the Thunderbolt record right here at the bottom of the screen. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So I'll, so now I have the channels set up here, right? I push create, all right? I did two, I did one. Let me see, let me delete that again. Make another, all right, let's see. I'm gonna create a two channel input that is gonna come in from Thunderbolt record one and two. So pick any one of the 64 channels. Okay, this is the uh, this is the stereo side, or if I wanted to pick them from here, pick channel one, two. It's a one keyboard, so I pick the stereo one and two. Create it makes creates a track that is receiving its audio channels two okay now this was just a virtual exercise so i did not plug a keyboard up into those channels i'm just showing you guys once you start playing now you should see signal on that channel and it is coming from thunderbolt record one and two okay now at this point, if you don't understand something, you need to go back because it, it only gets more confusing from here. <clears throat> you need to go back to the beginning and make sure you're understanding understanding the signal flow and how we got the audio from keyboard to the interface from the interface to control panel, from the control panel to logic, okay, or to your DAW. All right. So once you get this far, um, it should be starting to make a little bit more sense. Um, but that's how you get the audio into your computer, all right? Again, those 32 channels show up from here. 64 channels show up from here into your routing matrix here. These 64 channels, 1 through 32, 32 through 64. Then from there, you send them to the DAW by requesting that input to show up inside the DAW. That's where the audio comes from. Okay, so this video is about 48 minutes so far. I'm going to stop here and give it a few days to get questions, some more views maybe. Um, and then from there, we're going to start talking about the more basic stuff as far as routing and stuff like that with the DAW and also adding AFX to being recorded and also answering other questions. So um, I hope this video so far is helping, has helped someone answer some questions. I know that if there had been a video this in depth when I first got my interface, um, it would save me a lot of time from having a lot of work. So if someone does have any questions, if there's anything you don't understand up to this point, let me know and get this next video out here pretty soon. Uh, but I thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. This stuff is helping me. 
keep up with the videos that I'm posting. Um, like the video, comment on the video, subscribe if there's specific questions you have, problems that you're having. And I will address that stuff as soon as possible. But again, thank you, Julie Steve Berry from Majestic Studios. You guys have a